Alright, so we now covered singly linked list as well as circular lists. Now this is going to be an important prerequisite for this video is we're going to talk about doubly linked lists which build on all of the concepts we previously learned. So I recommend if you haven't yet learned that or you haven't seen the videos that I posted on my channel, you check those out first before continuing with this video. So with that being said, let's get started with doubly linked lists. Now doubly linked lists are very similar to singly uh, linked lists, except they just have one more added kind of property to them. And that property is known as a previous attribute. So before we had our node object, which is what's going to be represented here, and it had a value and it had a next attribute. And this next attribute was a pointer and it pointed to the next node. Now that's great. But we ran into some issues and some things that we couldn't quite do as fast as we want. And that's what a doubly linked list is going to help us do by adding a new attribute called previous. I'm just going to call it prev, but previous is the actual name. Now, this means that we're actually going to have each node pointing not just to the next node in the list. So that way, but also pointing to the last node in the list. And this is why it's called doubly linked, because it's linked to a node in two ways. So anyways, let's erase that for now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change our DLL class or our SSL class to be DLL, which stands for doubly linked list. And this is still going to hold either a head or tail attribute, whatever one we want. So maybe we'll just say tail in this case, and we'll implement a circular doubly linked list. And then it will have all those other methods that we want, you know, like add, um, remove, find, you know, whatever it is, right? That's what it'll have. So anyways, let's uh, now draw a doubly linked list and look at how this actually works. So we're obviously going to start with a head node. This will be my head node. Let's give it a value of seven. And then we're going to have another node. Let's give this one a value of three and another node. And this one can have a value of negative two. Now let's do the pointers. So each node is going to point to the next node as well as the previous node. So I'm just going to do that kind of in line here so that it makes a little bit of sense. So this one is going to point there and this one is actually going to point back as well. So this is going to be our next and this is going to be our previous and then the same here. So next and previous and I'll just do like an N and a P here just to represent that. And now what happens for the previous on seven and the next on two? Well, this is where we implement the circular structure that we talked about before. So remember, this is our head and this is our tail. So these will be the only ones that don't have a link to something else as of now. But what we'll do is we'll change this and we're going to implement a circular structure, which means that this tail is actually going to have its next attribute pointing back to the head. And this head is going to have its previous attribute pointing back to the tail like this. Now this way, we're able to access the list in two ways. So we can actually go forward through the doubly linked list as well as backwards and having reference either the tail or the head will give us access to both the head or the tail. So whether I put tail here or I put head and that's what we store as our main kind of pointer object for the list, it doesn't matter because head points to tail and tail points to head. So conversely, we have them both either way that we decide to do it. And that is another massive advantage of a doubly linked list. So just look at this structure that we've made right here and think about why we might want to do this. Why did this, why would this give us a speed advantage over a singly linked list? And maybe what are some disadvantages of it? Just think about that for one second and hopefully you guys can come up with some kind of answers I'm going to explain right now. So the main advantage of a doubly linked list is the ability to go through the list forwards as well as backwards. And let me explain kind of where this issue comes from. So in our singly linked list, which I'll just draw kind of like a tiny little one down here, which is like one, two, three, all we had was one link between each one. And then we had that circular circular structure that went like that. Now this meant that say we want to remove this tail node here. So let's do tail. Well, we have to actually traverse through the entire list until we reach the second last element to be able to remove this tail node. Now with this doubly linked structure, we no longer run into that issue. Now the reason we had to do that is because if we want to remove this node here, that means we need to change the pointer on this node to go back and circle to the head, right? Now, 
because of the way we did that, we had to traverse the entire list. And that's the issue with a singly linked list. That also means, you know, if we have a pointer to any node in this list and we want to know the node that comes before it, we need to traverse the entire list to be able to check that, which again is going to happen in ON time complexity. Whereas with this doubly linked list, having a pointer to any node, so let's say we have a pointer here, will allow us to access the node before and after it, which means that we can actually traverse the list much faster in certain applications. And if we know the location of an element, we can quickly go backwards from it or forwards from it, however we like, which we can't do with a singly linked list. So anyways, let's try to remove all this and clean some stuff up as we now talk more about the doubly linked list. So anyways, that is kind of the main advantage of it. Now, this also allows us to do things like add and remove the first and last element in constant time. So insertions and deletions are faster. And because we can go forward and backward in the list, that's how we do that. So let's kind of do a simulation of removing this tail element now um, compared to how we might have had to do it before. So if we want to remove this tail element, what we need to do is simply find the tail. So right now we have the tail and we have a pointer that comes to it. So what we do is we're going to go back to the node before it and we're going to start by setting this pointer to the node that the tail points to. So what we'll do is instead of having this n come here to 2, we'll change this and we'll point here. And actually, you know what, let me just change the color to be green so that you can see kind of the modifications that are made here. So anyways, this now is going to point here, right? That's the first change that we need to make. Now what we need to do is we need to change the previous pointer of this node here to be our next node. So what we do is we say tail dot next. So which is this one dot previous actually equals tail dot previous. So that means that this previous, which is right here, rather than pointing to the tail is going to point here to three. Now that we've successfully eliminated both pointers to this tail element, what we can do is we can change the tail now to be equal to this. So we say the tail is now this, and then this tail element is actually removed and that's kind of just taken out of memory because we have no pointers to it. So anyways, that is kind of how that works. Now I know it's messy because there's so many lines and stuff going on, but I'll write some pseudocode that hopefully should explain to you guys how to do this. Now, before I get into this too much, I just want to explain one disadvantage of this structure. The first is that it's very complex, as you can see with this next and this previous adding and removing things becomes more difficult um, as well as takes up more memory because now rather than having each node point to simply one item, we're pointing to two, which obviously is going to take up well double the memory. So that can be kind of inefficient if you're worrying about memory space. Now these pointers don't take up very much memory at all and you probably won't notice them in a program that has less than like millions of elements in kind of a list. But you know, if you're worried about memory, then that is something to consider. So anyways, let's write some pseudocode and I'll write it down here on how we traverse this uh, doubly linked list, which is actually the same as singly um, and how we can remove a certain element. So let's say we want to remove this tail element. Well, how do I do that? So I actually don't need to traverse it because we have the tail element already set. So if I want to remove that, well, what I can do is simply just do the process I talked about before. So we'll start by setting the tail um, or the node before the tails next property. So this one here to be equal to the head. So we'll say tail dot, and I guess this would be previous. And then we'll say tail dot previous dot next is actually equal to tail dot next. So again, what that's changing here is this attribute, and this is making this now go up here to the head. All right, sweet. That's how that works. Okay. Now what we need to do is change the pointer on the head to go to our new element. So we'll do that. So to do that, we simply say tail dot previous because that is going to be, oh, sorry. What am I saying? Tail dot previous tail dot next dot previous, which now is pointing to this head node here is going to be equal to, in this case, tail dot previous. You can kind of see how this works. They look a little bit reverse here. You just kind of reverse the next and the previous um, swap those around. And that's kind of how that works. And now what we just say is tail equals. And in this case, I guess it would be equal to tail dot previous. So we'll say tail dot previous. 
Um, and I think that's actually all we need to do. So we've changed the pointer on this, we've changed the pointer on this, and now we just set this as our new tail, and so this will successfully eliminate that element. Now let's show one more example just how we add something. I don't want to go through every method, but I want to give you guys enough kind of examples to where you can play with it and you know make mistakes, but have an idea on what you're doing. So let's think about how we can add an element now um, to the beginning of our list. So again, we have our tail attribute. So what we need to do now, if we want to add a new element is we need to change a few pointers. So we need to add a pointer that goes to head. We need to change this previous pointer from head to go back to our new node. And then we need to add the tails pointer so that it goes to now our new head node. And then we need to change this new head node to go to the tail node. So there's actually four things that we need to do. So it's a little bit more complicated, but it shouldn't be that crazy. So I'm just going to erase this pointer here um, just because it kind of takes up a lot of room as well as this pointer text and now let's start writing so what we're going to do if we want to add that new node is we'll say n equals node all right sweet now we can start by setting the value previous and next so i'm just going to do a little semicolon to save some space here and just say n dot value equals i don't know let's make it equal to nine and now we'll start by saying n dot next is actually going to be equal to tail dot previous and remember we could be keeping track of the head here but i've just decided to keep track of the tail since we're in that circular structure it doesn't matter so we have n.next equals tail.previous okay great so that means now our new one is pointing to head all right so what do we need to do now set the previous value to be equal to tail so now we'll say n.previous equals tail okay great so now our new head node which we're putting right here is pointing here as well as its previous value is pointing here to our tail Sweet. So let's remove that. And now we need to change the pointers on our head and our tail. So we're going to say head.previous, which would be tail.next.previous. Okay. <laughs> so tail.next.previous is equal to n. So again, that's going to point to this because the next node goes here. And then we get that previous pointer, which will go back to whatever node we want. So there we go, is equal to n. And then we'll say tail dot previous dot next uh is that right oh sorry no that's not correct we have to do tail dot next is equal to head yeah sweet that's how we do it so then tail dot next is equal to n because this next node was originally pointing to the head but now we need to set it equal to n and now that we've done that everything should be good so let's do a quick simulation here on what we've done and just make sure that this actually makes sense uh so let's erase that erase that just get rid of some of this junk and run through it one last time okay so let's just pretend these don't currently have a pointer um and let's add that new node so let's add it here say it has a value of nine okay so we started by setting its next value here and its previous value to the tail so we know that that's correct and then what we did is we changed the first thing which was this new node so that its previous value goes to here Okay, awesome, good to go. And then what we did is we set the next value of our tail, which is this, so that it goes to our new head node. So the next attribute, I guess we'll just put here, and it points back to here. And that is good to go, that's awesome. So now when we do tail.previous, or sorry, not tail.previous, tail.next, that points to our new head node. Our new head node now points to the next node in our list, and this previous pointer is going here, as well as the previous pointer from our head now goes back to our tail node. Very good, we are good to go. And that is how you implement a doubly linked list. All right, so just watching back this video and I wanted to add something really quickly in just to explain to anyone that might be confused. For all of these examples, I've been using an already existed list, which means, you know, we've already had elements in the list. Now, what happens if you're starting with a blank list, which inevitably you will be starting with in some cases? Well, if you are, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start by having your tail attribute, which will be here, pointing to null. So you're going to have no nodes in a blank list. So the way that you know this is blank is when tail points to null. If it points to null or it points to none or it points to nothing, whatever it is, then you know you don't have any elements. So when you initially, you know, say you have this add method here, when you initially call this add method, the first thing you're checking is if tail equals equals null. Now, if it does, you need to create a new node and point tail to that node. But how does this work? Well, What's going to happen is you're going to create a new node and this is going to be your tail. But how does the previous and next attribute of this first node work? Well, we've talked about this circular structure. So let's implement it the exact same except with one node. 
So let's say the value is seven here. Now, what is the next and previous? Well, next actually points to itself and previous actually points to itself. Now I know I just butchered those lines so I can redraw them. But anyways, like previous here goes there and next goes back to itself. So what actually happens here is we still have a circular structure just with one node. Now I know this is weird to think about, but when you're adding a new node at the end, what you'll do is you'll just say tail dot next equals whatever this is. And you'll say tail dot previous equals whatever this is. And it just works the same. So as if you had one or two different nodes, when you add a new node in here, it doesn't make a difference because all you're doing is just changing the pointers. And regardless of if you had 10 nodes or one node, since you can keep this consistent circular structure, let's see, like when I add a new node, all I need to do is say, if I add one here is I'll change the next pointer of this node to go here and I'll change the previous pointer to go here. And then I change this pointer, which is previous to go to our new tail node, right? And I change the next one to go to our new node. And that's all I need to do to add something in. So anyways, that's what I just wanted to quickly cover here to make sure that no one's super confused. And obviously when you're adding nodes, the first condition you check is if you have a, like if your list is empty to start, cause then you need to create that first initial node and set those pointers to be itself. And that's just what I wanted to make sure everyone was clear of. So anyways, continue with the video. Now, again, just quick recap here. This is faster at inserting and deleting things in most cases, because we don't have to loop through the entire list, especially if we already have a pointer to our head node and our tail node. But the disadvantage of this is it takes up more room in memory. So that's something to be aware of. But being able to go forward and backward through the list is actually a massive advantage. And with the singly linked list, you run into a lot of issues where sometimes, you know, you have a node and you just want to get the node before it. So you can remove that node or do something and you have to end up traversing the entire list, which takes again, O N time, which is a lot of time, especially when you're trying to do things very quickly. So anyways, that has been it for doubly linked lists. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did learn something, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more data structures and more Python videos.